Hey everybody, it's Mr. Hendricks here, and we're looking at some problems involving Newton's second law of rotation. Okay, so Newton's second law of rotational motion um, is essentially just Newton's second law, but it's turned into a rotational format. So we remember Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration. Well, this one, we are looking at rotational systems, so let's kind of relate the two, okay? So, another way to write this equation is, uh, you might see more often, torque equals acceleration times moment of inertia, okay? So, inertia here is just an object's tendency to stay in motion or stay at rest. Um, it depends on the object's mass. So how massive it is, if it's got more mass, um, it may have more inertia. It also depends on the shape of the object, okay? So if we think about this, this is force. Torque is just a rotational force. And then moment of inertia would be my mass. And this right here, this alpha, Greek letter alpha, that is my angular acceleration. So it's force, or torque, equals mass times acceleration, okay? So let's see if we can figure out this problem here. So a solid wheel right there in figure 15 has a mass of 5.2 kilograms. So let's write out the variables that we're going to use. 5.2 kilograms and has a diameter of 0 0.55 meters. Okay. And then it's at rest, so we have angular velocities involved here. So the initial angular velocity is zero radians per second. It's at rest. And then you need to rotate it at 12 revolutions per second in 35 seconds. So our final angular velocity is going to be 12 revolutions per second. And we have a time that we want to get that going that fast in 35 seconds. Okay, so A, what torque do we need to apply? And B, if a nylon strap is wrapped around the outside of the wheel, how much force would you need to exert on the strap? Okay, so A, what we're really doing here is we're looking for that value of torque. So we can actually find our angular acceleration with these values here, with those angular uh, velocities and time and we can find our value for the moment of inertia with the mass and the diameter which will change into a radius and then there's also an equation that we have to remember which you can find that um, in a chart in the textbook or you could look it up on the internet uh, but the moment of inertia for a disk like that is going to be one half mr squared So that's just our basic equation for moment of inertia for a solid disk like that. And then angular acceleration is going to be final angular velocity minus initial angular velocity over the time value that we need. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little bit of conversion here. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this here and we will go from there. So let's do the moment of inertia first. That might be the easiest thing to tackle. So it's going to be one half times mass, which is 5.2 kilograms, times radius squared. So we have a diameter of 0.55. We need to change that into a radius. So remember, diameter is all the way across. Radius is halfway across the circle. So it would be 0 0.275 meters squared. So then we put this in our calculator. So 0.275 squared times 5.2 and we get 0.196625 so I'm just going to kind of keep that value in my calculator we'll say 0.197 and the units are kilograms times meters squared for moment of inertia so that's one value we're going to use okay and then we need to do our angular acceleration okay in order to do this, we want everything in radians per second. Um, I had I wrote radians per second here, but then in the problem we're given revolutions per second. Okay, and in order for everything to work with torque, we want those all to be in radians per second. 
So let's change this value, that final velocity, to, uh, to uh, radians per second. So if you like to do tracks, we can do that. So we got 12 revolutions in one second. Okay, so we convert revolutions to radians. So one revolution, that would be all the way around the circle, which is 2 pi radians. Okay, a little bit of dimensional analysis there. My revolutions cancel. And we just take 12 times 2 pi to get our radians per second, which is uh, 75.398, so 75.40. And that would be radians per second. Okay, so now we're going to use this and our time, because really we're going from... 0 to 75.4, so our change in angular velocity would just be that 75.40 radians per second. And our time to make that change is 35 seconds. And then we can just use those two to get my angular acceleration. Okay? And we get an angular acceleration of 2.15. And that is radians second squared. So that's our second value that we're looking for. So we found our moment of inertia and we found our angular acceleration. Okay, and we'll come back to this one here in a minute. Just going to kind of move that out of the way. It wants to cooperate for me. Alright, so now we can use Newton's second law to find the torque that we need. So that's A. For A, we were just looking for the torque. So a net torque is equal to angular acceleration, which is 2.15 radians per second, times my moment of inertia, which is 0.197 kilograms times meters squared. So if you just multiply those two out, uh, we get a value of 0.42. So 0.42, and that's torque, so this label would be Newton meters. So that would be our answer for A. And then B, it says if I put that strap on there and I start pulling with it, uh, how much force would I need to exert on the strap? Well, then we have to kind of go back to our equation for torque. So torque equals FR sine theta. And since this is a rotate, it's a... a a circular object here, we're pulling at a 90 degrees, so that sign would just go away, turn into a 1. Okay, so really we just have torque equals force times radius. And we have a value for torque, which is 0.42 Newton meters. And force is what we're looking for. And our radius, we use that up above here, right, because we had our diameter, we cut that in half to use the radius for that moment of inertia is 0.275 meters. So this is pretty simple here to figure out that force once we know what we're supposed to plug in, right? So 0.275 meters. Boom, boom. And you can see those meters will cancel out. We'll be left with newtons. So we get 0.42 divided by 0.275 is 1.54. So a force of 1.54 Newtons in order to make that disk do what we want. Okay, so that's the first problem with Newton's second law of rotational motion. You can kind of see that these take a little bit of work uh, because this equation here, Newton's second law, is actually a few equations in one. All right, so this is its own equation, that's its own equation, that's its own equation. So they take a little bit of work. It's uh, you have to know what to plug in what. So for the second problem, kind of a similar idea here. A rope is wrapped around a pulley and pulled with a force of 13 newtons. Okay, that is this. The pulley's radius is 0 0.150 meters. The pulley's rotational speed increases from 0.0, .0 to 14.0 revolutions per minute in 4.5 seconds, what is the moment of inertia of the pulley? So we have torque equals angular acceleration times moment of inertia. Now we're looking for that. Okay, so 
we have, let's just kind of write out our equation, torque equals force times radius, moment of inertia equals one half mr squared, okay, because it's the pulley, which would be a disc again, and let's start plugging stuff in. So torque is pretty easy, we have a force and a radius, so 13 newtons, and the radius is 0 0.150 meters, that's a pretty quick one, so 13 and 0 0.150 gives you a value of 1.95 and that's Newton meters okay and we also needed this equation I forgot about this one so final minus initial over time we don't really want this one because that's what we're looking to solve. We'll get a value after we use this one and this one. So this is torque again, this is angular acceleration. So for our angular acceleration, we want that final minus initial. Okay, so this one's a little bit different compared to the last one because we're going from revolutions per minute and we want radians per second. We could change this into minutes and then change that into radians, but I think it's just easier to change this one value into radians per second okay so we're using tracks here so 14 revolutions in every one minute so one revolution that's two pi radians just like on the last one and now we got to go from minutes to seconds so one minute is 60 seconds and then our dimensional analysis let's make sure everything works out so revolutions are gone so we're going to be ending with radians per second We'll have to take 14 times 2 pi divided by 60. Okay, 14 times 2 pi divided by 60. And that gives me 1.47. And that's radians per second. Okay, so this is going to be what goes on the top of the fraction here. 1.47 radians per second over my time, which is four and a half seconds. So now we just divide those two values and we get 0.33. Okay, so 0.33 radians per second for our angular acceleration, and that should be seconds squared. I may have forgot that above. So remember we're doing seconds divided by seconds, so angular acceleration would be seconds squared. Okay. And now we're just going to use Newton's second law. So we have a torque, 1.95 Newton meters. We have an angular acceleration of 0.33 radians per second squared. And then we have that moment of inertia, which we're looking to find. Okay, so a little bit of simple algebra here after we get those bigger equations kind of hammered out. Okay. So that will go away there. We'll have to do 1.95 divided by 0.33. And we get 5.91. So we get a moment of inertia of 5.91. And that would be kilograms times meters squared. Okay. So that's how it works if we are given a torque or values to find a torque and then we're given values to find an angular acceleration and we're looking for that moment of inertia. So working with my students here, um, I suggest writing down all these equations. Okay, so let me get that X out of the way there. I suggest writing down all these equations That one, that one, and then the one that I kind of moved down here as well. So I suggest that you write down these four equations. Okay, so this is our regular torque equation. This is the moment of inertia for a disc, which would be the pulley. This is Newton's second law of rotational motion. Torque equals angular acceleration times moment of inertia. And this is our equation for angular acceleration. Uh, by writing these equations down and I didn't write down all my variables down below here, but if you write all your equations down, write the variables that you're given or the values that you're given for the variable, it makes these kinds of problems quite a bit easier because then you can kind of look at your list of knowns and unknowns and you can 
figure out what values you have. Like this one, we were not given a mass, okay? And we were given a radius, but the mass doesn't really matter because we're just looking for the moment of inertia in the end, which is just that I. So we would have, could assume that we'd be given enough values for torque and angular acceleration for this one. So that is how these types of problems work with angular acceleration and Newton's second law of rotational motion. So hopefully this helps. Thanks.